So in today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about how to maximize and get the absolute best sounding vocal that you can get with whatever setup you have at home. You know this talk is overrated. Walk is complicated. All you care about is hard and soft shells. See, you've been eating all day and you shitting now. Hell, I really think you need some help. It's straight picante. Not sure if you can handle. Pepto Bismol. I know you'll need it after. Yeah, yeah. Oh. What you looking at? Trying to write a song here. <laughs> okay, I know it sounds stupid. I just actually wrote those lyrics just for a kick so you guys would get a kick out of it. Yeah, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to record vocals that will sound pretty good and the way that I process them, all that kind of good stuff. I love Mexican food. So if you ever see me, bring me Mexican food or tacos, specifically tacos, carnitas. Those are good. Let me get this off. Let me, let me talk to you for a second, okay? So nowadays, Everyone is able to easily upload songs online using DistroKid. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description to save six or seven percent. Anyways, anyone can get music out nowadays. Literally anyone. I could get music out today and put it on Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff. Not everyone knows how to get really good sounding vocals. And I'm not saying I do because damn, if I if I sound good, that's an insult to people like, you know, uh, I don't know, people that record vocals. Can't think of anyone right now. <laughs> so in today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys about how to maximize and get the absolute best sounding vocal that you can get with whatever setup you have at home. Now, keep in mind though, that skimping out on things like, you know, the acoustics of your room or the microphone or just, just the tone of your voice. Some songs, the vocals are, mm, they're, they're, hit them with that. Mm, uh, mm. <laughs> Fairy godparents. And so, you know, I want to I want to kind of show what I would do to get these decent sounding vocals. I think I have decent sounding vocals. You guys tell them in the in the comments and videos as well. That being said, I want to say something. This is this is really this is really important, okay? Subscribe. Gotcha. Um <laughs> really, seriously, what's really important is that your acoustics are important. A lot of people think that just putting on vocals, yeah, it's okay, I can't do much. But trust me, there's a lot you can do with acoustics. Just blankets around your room or around your house, setting up a vocal booth using like a fucking mic stand, like a lot can be done. That's number one. Get as best of an acoustic environment that you can with whatever it is that you have available to you. If you have money, go out and buy that stuff, right? Me, I kind of use this arm set up as a temporary solution, okay? Because I'm not really planning on releasing these songs I'm just getting a rough demo down just, you know, just so I have a vibe to catch on. That's how I do it. The next thing is the actual voice. If you don't know how to control your voice, you will not get a great sounding recording. Additionally, if the tone of your, of your voice sounds really nasally, there's only so much you can do with EQ to change that, okay? If you sound nasally, that's also like breathing techniques and you can change it with, you know, practice and, and working with a vocal instructor or something like that. Number three is your microphone. Microphones make a big difference in the sound, the actual tone of it. They're like an instrument themselves. This here is just what I use. It's like an AT20, it's like the $100 microphone. It just, man, I'm, I'm not recording, you know, I don't know, top 100 billboard ready songs here. I'm just recording scratch vocals. Now, everything else I'm gonna show you will help, but it is not, it is makeup. It is literally covering up and fixing a little bit of the stuff. Okay, you know, it's like it's like me being like overweight, and I have to go to the gym. I can't just freaking put on like a, a compression shirt and squeeze all the fat, right? I gotta hit the gym. You gotta practice. You gotta you know get the right equipment or make do. You know, like and so if you can't afford dumbbells, you get like a four liter milk jug and fill it with water and a couple of those and curled. I'm getting off topic. Yeah, so let's talk about how to number one, record your vocals. I know this is very vloggy right now, but you're sitting here in front of the microphone, right? You're sitting here in front of the microphone. You wanna have this much space between the mic and yourself, okay? This is where I would, and I would use the pop filter as the limiter as of how far I can go. I can't go any further. That's it. that looks really weird, 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 weird. But you can only go this far, okay? That's number one. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm running my audio through this 
channel strip from ART. This is actually a modified version. You can basically buy the stock one and send it some to someone. They can like replace the tubes and a couple of the components inside of it, the transformers. Up. Sounds really cool. And then it's going into my audio interface and then into FL Studio. So let's hop into FL Studio and show you what the chain looks like. Okay, so here's the thing, right? So we got this vocal recorded. Again, it's a scratch vocal, keep that in mind. Very first plugin that I have on the actual channel is going to be the pitcher plugin. Now, if you have auto tune, you can use whatever you want. The reason why you have that is because you want to correct the entire signal before it gets to anything else. Yeah, so I have the pitcher, and that's what I'm using. I've set it to the key of D minor, and I have my retune speed. There's nothing overly complicated, okay? Changing the settings of your auto tune is just auto tuning it more. When you hear people talking about, oh, how do I get my vocals to sound like Young Thug or T Pain? or whatever, whatever, whatever. Those guys are actually, that's their voice and how they're singing into the auto tune. That is something that those, those artists have become a master. I can't really tell you how to do that because I mean, I, that, that, that you just, it's, it's one of those things you build from practice. Next thing I have is this Arvox from Waves. This is just a gate and a compressor built all into one, specifically kind of catered towards vocals. So I'm gonna have about four or five, maybe six dBs of compression, but it sounds really good. We're gonna listen to that vocal. You know this taco's overrated. Guac is complicate. All you care about is hot or soft shells. You know this taco's overrated. Guac is complicate. All you care about is hot or soft shells. So we're getting around like four, maybe five dBs of compression based on what I'm seeing on here, but it sounds good. It kind of controls the dynamics, kind of pushes it right to the front. But here's a trick. We're doing this in stages. We're layering the compression. You'll see that in a second. The next thing I'm doing is I'm EQing it. And the EQ is important because it helps me kind of control the parts of my voice that don't necessarily sound good. Once you understand what I'm about to show you, you'll kind of know what to hopefully hear or listen for in your own tracks. Cause I'm gonna exaggerate it in a bad way. And I'm gonna overdo it as well. So you can see what it sounds like. We're gonna go and we're gonna reset these EQ and frequencies. So we're going to go first, we're going to have the high pass 90, 80, 100 hertz. You know, that's something you got to play with and figure out. You know, this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hard or soft shells. You know, this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hard or soft shells. See, you've been eating all day and you shitting now. Hell, I really think you need some help. It's, you know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hard or soft shells. See, you've been eating all day. So now that we've done that, we'll decide if we want to make it brighter or not because I think it sounds pretty bright as it is. Down here, you're going to hear a lot of the, the bass of the, of the voice, right? and you have to decide if it sounds good with the song you want to add more or less of it so we're going to exaggerate it you know this taco's overrated walk is complicate all you care about and then we're going to cut it a lot you know this taco's overrated so you don't want to be like overdoing it i try to think when you're eqing anything especially vocals try doing no more than three to four dbs sometimes you need more if, the, if it's a very poorly recorded vocal this is what i do so we're gonna just cut this a little you bit. Know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hard or soft. Right, a little bit. And the next thing is you're gonna hear a little bit of like a boxiness around 300, 400 hertz. You know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hard or soft shells. See, you've been eating all day and you shitting now. Hell, I really think you need some help. Next thing we're gonna do is that if you double this frequency, and this is just how I think about it, this is not like some proven scientific pro engineer thing that I've learned, but it just kind of, it, it's, it's what I've always done. It's always sounded good to me. So if you double this 400, this 387 that you see on here, if you double this and you bring up to the 800 range, you're gonna hear something similar, but in a higher register. You know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hard or soft shells. See, you've been eating all day. And this frequency kind of sounds like I'm talking like this to you. Boosting this frequency, that's what it kind of sounds like to me. So that's why I'm cutting that as well. You know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. And it's usually gonna be between like 800 to 1000 hertz. So some of these ranges, like the boxy range is gonna be around that 
around that area. You know this dog goes overrated. And don't overthink it. You're just making these moves and you're moving on to the next thing. Don't overthink that, yo, should I do a 1 dB more, 1 dB less? Like you can, you can spend forever tweaking it, right? So just find something where you can live with it. You know this dog goes overrated. Walk is complicated. All you care about is hard. Right, and here is where it kind of always sounds harsh. You can like, you know, really make the vocal stand out or you can also like make it sound a little bit more smooth and push it to the background with cutting or boosting of the frequencies around 3000. You know this dog goes overrated. Walk is complicated. All you care about is hard as soft shell. Right, that sounds cool. And cutting it also exaggerates the high frequency. And you can see so far, I haven't boosted anything, okay? It just sounds good going into that. You know this dog goes overrated. Walk is complicated. All you care about is hard as soft shell. Cutting around 200 hertz cutting around 400 hertz cutting around 800 hertz cutting or boosting depending on what the sound needs around 300 hertz all right next thing de -esser. simple straightforward my technique of finding that frequency is turning on the side chain and then moving this around until i hear it and this is where i like to solo specifically and you're going to hear like sometimes you're going to hear whistling sounds you know this Right, right there. Now the side changes, we're auditioning those frequencies. And then we set the range, how it's gonna move in the threshold. We're gonna. You know this talk is overrated. Walk is complicated, all you care about is. Right, it's subtle. It's not supposed to be overdoing. I don't wanna have a lisp when you're DSing. And the next thing is again, some more compression. Now with the compression, you can have it before or after the EQ or before or after the DS, or it's all just compression at the end of the day. You know this talk goes overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hard or soft shells. So we got around three to four dBs here. We got three to four on the R box compressor. So total around eight dBs of compression in the whole thing. And it kind of sounds steady it sounds like it's compressed but i think it sounds good to me next thing is this echo this is something that i kind of picked up in school when we learned about rock vocals specifically and without adding too much reverb to it you have like a slap echo in the back that kind of creates this separation in the whole song so let's let me turn this off and kind of bring this up slowly and this by the way was just a preset you know this taco's overrated walk is complicate all you care about is hard or soft shells right so we got a little bit of, you can hear it in like the left and right ears a little bit, and it sounds good. Now, if you wanted, you could go into your plugin chain and record or use a plugin to make a doubled vocal effect. But I've always found it better to actually record the double vocals because the naturalness, the, the human, the human nuances of re-recording the vocals and having them kind of fall a little bit ahead of the beat, a little bit behind the beat, and layering them with this other vocal that also is ahead or behind, a little bit out of tune, a little bit in tune, that kind of stuff creates a very thick sounding vocal. Adding something like a doubler on there can is like a very quick way to like get something. Both are okay, just knowing which one sounds good. I personally have always liked the sound of doubled vocals, so I'm going to do this because I don't want to, I can't record with them recording in the I like this Uber mod. Put you guys on game. Great little plugin. You know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. Oh, like that to me is a lot. Soft shells. See you've been eating all day and you shitting up. Bro, hell, I really think you need some help. Like I'm just playing with those settings and you know the 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 depth here is referring to the actual pitch modulation that's happening. The slow rate is the rate of the actual modulation, the pitch warble, right? You could probably like increase the depth of this and slow this down. You know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicated. All you care about is hard as soft. soft shells. We're getting really crazy with it, right? So, but we're gonna go here. We're gonna do the double tracking mono. Uh, the depth a little bit lower. We're gonna set the slow rate to. We're gonna you listen know to this. this. Overrated. Walk is complicated. All you care about. 
Yep. And you just, you don't want to be able to really tell that the effect is there. So when I put it on. You know this taco's overrated. Guac is complicate. All you care about is hot or soft shell. Very simple. And when I play the music with it, you'll be able to not tell that there's a doubled vocal underneath. Hopefully, because we haven't actually done it. But let's do it. You know this taco's overrated. Guac is complicate. All you care about is hot or soft shells. See, you've been eating all day and you shitting now hell. You know this taco's overrated. Guac is complicate. All you care about is hot or soft shells. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just add some reverb to it. So what I do here is you select your channel, right? And you see this little arrow at the bottom? Or you can just like shift click on the arrow and then right click on the channel, track routing, route selected to this track. That's another way. You're basically sending the audio there for processing up in parallel. Important, important. And we have the Valhalla plate because plate reverbs always sound dope. And then we're just gonna, we're making it dark over here with the, the EQ that you have. And then we're also EQing it underneath as well. And then how we send this recorded vocal is through this little knob at the bottom. So let's do that. You know this taco's overrated. Walk is complicate. All you care about is hot or soft shells. See, you've been eating all day and you shitting now. Hell, I really think you need some help. It's straight picante. Not sure if you can handle. I'm like Shakespeare with the lyrics. All right, so those vocals sound decent. They were scratch vocals, they were just for fun. Also, I wanna shout out Maddie who sent uh, the guitar loop. We're actually working on something, the guitar loop he sent, that's what we're using. Now, power user tip. If you plan on recording vocals very often, save this as a channel strip. Additionally, if you're stuck around this far, check out the description. This actual, this whole channel strip, the way that I've set it up, if you own these plugins, you'll be able to download and use it exactly how I've set it up, free. Go ahead, download it, have fun with it. And then no beat making today because we've just done this. Why am I in such a weird mood today? And addition, another, another power tip for you is to save the channel strip with the notebook attached to it so that you can write lyrics if you want, you know, all you, I know you guys are geniuses out there with the lyrics, so use that, that's the, that's how I do it. The thing that I didn't talk about in this video so far is this little button if you are on FL Studio 20. If you click on this button, this button basically decides what is recorded. If this button reads pre, that means it's going to record the audio before all of these effects. However, you will be monitoring your audio in your headphones through these effects. If you are recording with these effects on your channel, you wanna make sure you have a powerful enough computer to actually handle it. I'm able to luckily record with three or four of these channels and have the vocals processed through that. However, if you want to save on the CPU processing, you can also embed by clicking that button and when it says post, it's going to record the audio after it's been processed through that. Now, that is definitely very daredevil if you do that because if, especially if you have like sounds like Uber mod or like some kind of doubler or an echo on it and you want to correct the pitch of it later or you want to do any kind of editing to it, it becomes very challenging. So I, I, I recommend that you keep it at pre and then make sure that you're happy with the vocals and then commit to those after towards the end. If you're recording a demo, who cares? Just have fun with it, get it down, whatever, whatever, whatever. And uh, I think that's all for this video. I hope you guys found this helpful. Again, there's no, there's no secrets to this, you guys. There's no sauce or anything like that. It's just a matter of really understanding your tools and, and, and knowing them like the back of your hand. Once you get comfortable and you understand the techniques, apply effects, overdo effects, exaggerate it, play with your own voice, go real deep, go real high, whatever you wanna do, just have fun with it. Thanks for watching. My name's Thicky Bits. I will see you in the next video. That was racist as hell. But thank you guys for watching. My name is Sicky Beats. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs> Sounds like a cougar. <laughs> yeah. Um, took like a couple whatever minutes. We got her down in one take. Have fun with it. <laughs> Stop recording. Stop. Like how tints no see through, no one can see what we do. X ray and no disclosure. Girl, let me be your chauffeur. Switching lanes, just swerving. Text me, I'll be right over. I can hold you how you wanna be held. Touch you how you wanna be felt.